This is how we ride. This is how we do. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to say this. Yes, I am doing my ghetto granny hand clappings. But I hate to say this. I made a tweet last night. I said, hate to say it, but the Lucas Oil Late Model Show at East Bay Raceway Park is just far and beyond more compelling than World of Outlaws at Volusia Speedway Park. And for those who don't know it, the definition of compelling, evoking interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. And, 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 and this compelling word defines what I'm talking about tremendously because it is a, it's irresistible. I can't lie to myself. I can't do it anymore. I'm sorry. I love sprint car racing. Sprint car racing, I wish y'all were the best of the best and y'all were four breasts, but you ain't. In the sprint car world, you've had about the same five guys be up front. And in the late model world, you have feature winners not making the main event. You have guys finishing top five one night that can't even finish fifth in a heat race the next. It is unbelievable. I, I cannot, uh, I, I don't know how to communicate this to you people about the depth of these late model fields down here in Florida. And I explained why the late model racing down here is more alluring than the sprint car racing because this is the Super Bowl. This is the AFC versus the NFC happening right now in Florida with the World Outlaw Late Model Series drivers and Lucas Oil Late Model Series drivers facing off against one another. Because once the late model series begins after Florida, these two series will split off and they will take their stars with them. And they will compete in the different conferences throughout the year. Now, there'll be a special events in Eldora, this and that, or they'll compete. But these races that are happening right now are unbelievably, these are Super Bowl events. And the sprint car stuff is just same old, same old right now. Same old, same old. Who, who? Who shocked the world? Are y'all going to tell me Corey Lyson in the Indy Race Part 71 is shocking the world? And that's probably the biggest, that's probably the biggest, uh, you know, shocker here or, or realization for me is how lacking in race cars, performing race cars there are in the sprint car side of things. We, we, you can't provide the same depth. You can't. You can't even argue that. You can say, oh, we got the All-Stars, not just the Outlaw. Tyler Courtney was struggling to keep Craig Kinzer off of his ass to make the A-Main last night at Volusia. And that's the biggest hitter right now that the All-Stars have, in my opinion. In my opinion. And Tyler Courtney's a badass racer. But that's that shows you the depth. Your best hitter out of the All-Stars can barely keep up with Craig Kinzer on the racetrack. Hold on. Roll the damn tape. Flow racing. This is the A-Main in the late mile division. Now, before I keep pushing play here, yeah, there went Jonathan Davenport. There went, uh, there's Brandon Overton right there. There's so many things happening. This is at the back of the field. Ricky Thornton Jr. just flow by, flow by. I mean, there's so many things happening in the late mile world. Chassis battles, driver battles, entertainment in the tech area too. Droop rules. Somehow Brandon Overton's left rear is six feet in the air, but he still passes Droop. They're whooping their ass in the tech area too. It's a battle all over the track and in the pits. Now look at this. We're, we're almost three wide. They're almost four. We're side by side for the lead. Now let's not even worry about the lead. Look at this shit. That there isn't a car that ain't side by side, except for the leader in second. Surprisingly, both the late model and the sprint car highlights are five minutes long, but it ain't five minutes of watching one car go around the track and talk about his stats from three years ago. Look, Ryan Gustin, who was battling for the lead earlier, is now stuck in a three wide battle. This is back here for fourth. They're three wide still, and they're side by side. Here comes Ricky Thornton Jr. starting 20th. We're still three wide. We're still side by side. This is racing. I can't, I can't, I, I don't know how to tell you this. The proof is in the visuals. They're still side by side for three laps straight. Five cars under a blanket. Four, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Going at it. Comers and goers. Ashton Winger getting up in there. Now, if you go look at the box score, it'll show you that Hudson O'Neill just led every single lap, but that's because of these cautions that we have. It did ruin the overall race for the lead, but it didn't ruin the race that was going on. I mean, geez, guys. I mean, look, I, I, this is insane. I, 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 go watch the highlights on Flow. Go watch them. 
It's on flow on YouTube. But then what we just saw. Now let's turn over to see what the sprint cars provided. Now I'm not going to show you the day race uh, because that is extremely disrespectful to what sprint car racing could provide. I'm even going to give y'all a pass on that one because we make fun of NASCAR how you can fall asleep five laps in and wake up with 10 to go and not miss a thing. That first race of the World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series season, you could have fell asleep on lap two, woke up at lap 24, and the only damn thing you missed was Macquarie breaking. And that's about it. But this was the later night show. This is the A-Main that Tyler Courtney struggled to pass or keep Craig Kinzer off of his ass to make. And uh, the big surprisers here, I guess, is Buddy Kofoid and Corey Eliason in these superstar rides. And they've uh, somehow pushed their foot all the way to the ground and kept it there enough to qualify for the pole. So we do have a pass for the lead. This is something the late battle crowd couldn't do, which was pass for the lead. Now, are we going to race for the lead? Do we get a race for the lead? Or is it just a pass for the lead? We got a pass. They're racing still. And, and, and they're racing, and we got a pass, and it's over. Okay, what's happening now? What, what are we watching cars go in, in a line on top of the race? We're lapping cars. Okay, we're passing lap cars. Yeah, sprint cars. Oh, Macri. Yes, a pass. A pass. Did, did, are we getting a race, though? Did, is anyone, where's the race at? Where is the race? I want to see some racing. We got a caution. We got a wreck. Oh, my. You know, I think this just comes back to the depths of the field. I mean, there is not enough depth in the sprint car world to think of having the ability to put on the same races as the late model industry. It's just not possible. David Gravel, another win. I, I think David Gravel's a shoe in for the World of Outlaw Championship this year. We can sit here and say that this is happening because this is Volusia on a half mile and... The late models are at East Bay, a short track, a boring style track. But at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, what are we supposed to do here? Ban half miles? Are we going to ban half miles? Because I watch late models go 3-4 wide all day at Eldor. I watch sprint cars put on okay races at Eldor. But I'm just telling y'all, if you sprint car fans, go out there and learn the teams and the drivers of the late model world. Because you got to learn the people a little bit. And that's with any racing. But once you start to learn the late model world just a little bit, you realize how it's just on another level. And that's why they they got paid on another level. I really do truly believe that right now. After studying, watching, observing for three years now on both sides of the fence, the late model industry is just next level right now. And that hurts my feelings. We don't have enough competition in the sprint car industry. And I'll tell you what, come next week at Volusia when the late models roll in, they're going to be extremely competitive. They're going to be three wide. They're going to be putting on shows. There's going to be a guy who wins one night but can't make the A the next. Because that's how deep those fields really actually are. Please recognize what is going on here. These late model drivers and teams and the, and the depth that this this late model, and, and the, like I said, the battles, the, even, in the, even, in the, even in the tech area, you got Brandon Overton six feet in the air on the left rear still going in there past the droop. Everybody's like, what the hell? What's going on here? I got eyes when you're on the track. You know, so you got all kinds of entertainment values over there. We're over here. No one's a cheater. We're all white collar. And we are the greatest show on dirt. No, you ain't. World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series, you are not the greatest show on dirt. You may have trademarked that, but that ain't you. Because right now, honestly, I see a trade in that label. Because I see the greatest show on dirt right now being dirt late model racing. It just is. It just is. Let me know what you think in the comment sections of this whole scenario. Has late model racing, and, and for those Sprint Car fans... And we got to thank streaming for this because the Sprint Car fans have got flow and dirt vision for the Sprint Car stuff. And they're watching these late model races. I guarantee you the, the Sprint Car fans last night when the World Outlaws delayed so long were watching the, the Lucas Oil late model race. And especially after my tweet. And they're like, oh my God, he's not lying. He's not wrong. Look at this. And, and I'm telling you, you Sprint Car people who was like, wow, this is amazing. When you go look at who was running up front and who was running in the back, 
The entire A main is David Gravel. The entire A main. The, the Bill Roses and, 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 and type teams in the late model world, they, they don't exist. They don't exist. No disrespect to Bill Rose. You're doing what you can over there in that community. And that's what I'm talking about is the communities. First to dead last, best in the business could win tonight. I can't say that about the World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series fields. But I can say that about the late model scene right now. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Uh, and always, be sure to subscribe. We'll catch you next time. And soon, live in Florida.